Myth two, American appliances don't work in Europe. Don't grow up. Ah! Am I going to die? Travelocity shows you when there's only a few seats left, so you don't miss out on a great deal. Travelocity, you'll never roam alone. The Senate plans to work through the night this coming Tuesday. Majority Leader Harry Reid thinks that will help fight off a Republican filibuster on the latest troop redeployment plan. It still appears, however, the Democrats lack the votes to override an all but certain veto by President Bush. And now the President has some breathing room for mass Republican defections, at least until September, when General David Petraeus delivers his report. But as the push to change course in Iraq gathers steam, one thing is becoming clear. U.S. troops could be in Iraq for years to come whether or not the candidates admit it. Joining us now is Larry Corby, Senior Fellow at the Center for American Progress. Larry, thanks for coming on. Nice to be with you, it's, If a Democrat wins uh, in this upcoming election, it seems to me certain that you will know personally really well the Secretary of State, whoever that might be, um, because that's your world. D tell me this, do the Democrats really believe that if a Democrat is elected, we're really going to pull all troops out of Iraq? They don't well, really believe that, do they? Well, I think that nobody wants to stay there forever. Right. People know that at some point you have to set a specific date to get out because if you don't, you lose control of your policy. Because with the last thing you want, for example, let's say somebody would assassinate the Ayatollah Sistani who holds the Shias back really from even more violence all hell would break loose and you'd have to run out. If you don't set a date, you do not have control of your policy and you'll look like uh, you are cutting and running, if, if you will. So I think whoever gets elected is going to set a specific well, what date. What does it mean to pull out? I mean, I, I, this seems like the essential term to define, right. pulling out. It doesn't mean withdrawing all American combat forces from Iraq. Well, I think the real question is, where do you leave them? Nobody. And if you go back to when Jack Murther in the fall of 2000, and five said, you know, let's strategically redeploy, which is a plan that we put out at the center at the same time. You leave forces in the area because you do have interest in the region. You can have forces in Kuwait where we've had them ever since we uh, threw Saddam out of Kuwait. You can put a marine expeditionary force in a carrier battle group over the horizon. You've got facilities in Bahrain and Qatar, so you're not leaving the region. But wait, I thought, I thought the whole point of pulling the troops out of Iraq, or one of the main points was the presence of the American military Muslim countries to stay just by itself, just as it was in Saudi Arabia. So why would you want to destabilize other Gulf countries like Bahrain or Qatar? Well, well I said, you're already there. So, I mean, that's not, in other words, what happened is when you went into Iraq, that became the big recruiting tool for Al-Qaeda. It wasn't our presence in Kuwait. Now, Saudi Arabia was a beginning of a recruit, recruiting tool, but not Kuwait, not Bahrain and Qatar. They've asked us to come. It's a big difference between sort of forcing yourself in there and being asked. Well, I don't, I don't, that's, I, I don't buy that distinction for a second, but let me ask you this. General uh, Rick Lynch. New York Times today piece, John Burns had this story in the Times, in which General Lynch, who commands a great deal, a great number of Iraqi and American forces in Iraq, said, if we leave, what happens to all the people who supported us? Well, that's important. When you leave, first of all, it's a disgrace that we're not letting more Iraqis into this country. I mean, the administration treats them like they were, you know, people that we'd have no dealings with. The people who've helped us, we've got to help get in the country. Two million people have already left the country, so we have to, and that's why it's important for us to set a deadline, then we can help those people to get out and get over here like we did with the Vietnamese. So there would be millions of Iraqis coming well, to this country. Well, again, already would every person in the country say, I helped America? Well, not everybody. You would know. We know who's helped us, okay? We have pretty good records of who helped us and who has not. We know that. Unfortunately, they're afraid to tell their neighbors, and that has been a problem ever since we got there. When I went there in 2003 and found out the Iraqis working with us were afraid to tell their neighbors, I said, we're not greeted as liberated. You right. know, this is no, not I, going to work I, the I way that we. I thought the same thing. Yeah, actually, Larry Kirk, thanks all for joining us. Nice I appreciate to be with it. You.